AMD's 4 gig SKU of the RX 570 launched back in 2017 with a price tag of $169 US. Nowadays it can be found for less than £80 on the used market but should you buy one? This is the Sapphire ITX RX 570 and I've paid £72 for this thing and let's see how it performs in 2023. But before I get into the video, what GPU do you have in your rig right now? Are you team red with AMD, team green with Nvidia, or even now team blue with Intel? Let me know in the comments down below. Moving back to the RX 570 and it was targeted at gamers looking to play games at 1080p with decent graphical settings. And this was thanks to its 2048 shading units and 4 gigs of GDDR5 memory. The card that I've got on test today is the Sapphire Pulse ITX and it's a good little card. It stays relatively cool considering its size. It stays around the mid 60s and it doesn't even get that loud either. I did clean it out, which I did in a YouTube short, so yeah, this thing is gonna be performing at its optimal performance. It also has a singular six pin PCIe power connector and AMD recommend a 450 watt power supply to juice this thing up. So let's see how the RX 570 performs in 2023. I've lined up 10 different games for benchmarking today and all testing is done at 1080p as I do not recommend playing in a resolution higher than 1080p on an RX 570, especially the 4 gig version. All testing is done on my testing system which has a Ryzen 5 5600G, 16 gigabytes of CL17 3600MHz memory, a 1TB Sabrent Rocket NVMe SSD, and an Acer Strix B550-F. As always, we're starting off with Unigine Superposition today and we are starting off with the 1080p medium preset where the RX 570 got 7,040, which is pretty respectable. First game up today is F122 and in my usual wet Australian benchmark, we set the settings to the medium preset here. As I thought, F1 is a game where you're going to like a lot of frame rate and Relatively, there was quite a bit of frame rate here with 96 FPS on average, with 74 FPS for the 1% low. Performance here, really good. We are using quite a bit of VRAM, around 3.7 gig, but there was no stutters or anything like that to worry about. So these are the settings I'd recommend playing F122 at. Next game up is Fortnite on the Chapter 4 map. This is the one that implemented Unreal Engine 5.1, which I did in a video not too long ago. However, I used the Pro settings at DirectX 12, and what this is is epic textures and epic view distance and everything else on low. So this gives you the best competitive advantage possible. And this got us 143 FPS on average, with 102 FPS for the 1% low. Fortnite is pretty notorious for them stutters, especially when you're just starting out and even on DirectX 12 too. But performance here, pair this with a FreeSync Premium Monitor, 143 FPS on average, totally great performance. You'll be having a blast playing Fortnite on these settings. Forza Horizon 5 is up next and for some reason, I didn't think it performed very well on older graphics cards, especially when I tested old GCN graphics cards. But here I set it to the low preset with TAA enabled and I don't think the low preset necessarily looks that bad. But the performance, on the other hand, not bad at all with 70 FPS on average and 59 FPS for the 1% low. Performance was incredibly consistent here, nice and smooth. It's quite a bit better than an old gen console experience as you're getting more than double the FPS while playing at similar quality. So. Yeah, these are the settings I'd recommend with Forza Horizon 5. Next up is Skyrim Special Edition and this is the 2016 launch and it defaulted to the Ultra preset and for good reason. Both the 1% low and average FPS was 60 FPS here so yeah, there's nothing to say about it. The game is locked at 60 FPS, you'll be having a great experience with Skyrim and you might even have some headroom for modding as well so yeah, really great here, but was there any doubt? Next up is the newest game on the list today, and that is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and not the original 2009 one, the 2022 one. But here we set it to the basic preset, which is essentially low, and this netted us 65 FPS on average, with 44 FPS for the 1% low. One thing I've noticed with this game is when there's a lot of smoke on screen, it does tank the frame rate quite a lot but there weren't any stutters to speak of, the performance was pretty smooth, as long as smokes aren't spammed in your game, 
you'll be having a great experience here and this may vary on a per map basis too. Next game up is GTA 5 and as you know we always like to test GTA 5 here on the channel as it was once a pretty old game to run but as I've said countless times on the channel you can run this thing on anything that was considered mid-range that has launched in the past 10 years so yeah GTA 5 always performs pretty well and today is no exception we set it to the high preset with two times MSAA just to clear up them jagged lines and I also enabled MSAA for reflections too and this got us 75 FPS on average with 64 FPS for the 1% low as always the 1% low figure in GTA totally fine this game never really stutters as long as you give it a good amount of RAM and a decent CPU too so yeah GTA 5 not bad performance here just driving around the city stuff like that you won't be having a bad experience at all on this game. Dirt Rally 2 is up next and as it's a Codemasters game it's going to be incredibly optimised. The game auto defaulted to high here and for good reason it got 110 FPS on average with 77 FPS for that 1% low. The FPS does drop quite slightly when there's a lot of dust on screen so when you're kicking up a lot of dust but to be fair if you pair this with a FreeSync Premium monitor I still think you're going to be having a great experience here. Cyberpunk is the one game today that I've tested at two different quality settings. First of all we tested it on the medium preset which netted us 34 FPS on average with 28 FPS for the 1% low. It does look pretty good here but I did accidentally leave motion blur on so you might get slightly more frames if you turn off motion blur. Personally I never play with motion blur, it's that one graphical setting that I absolutely hate. So yeah I didn't think it looked that good but my, I could be biased because it had motion blur on. Switching it up to the low preset which is what I recommend playing with this GPU at. It got 43 FPS on average with 35 FPS for the 1% low. I'm not sure if it was because motion blur was turned off but it felt a damn sight smoother and I couldn't really tell any of the graphical losses. Maybe if you pixel peek you might be able to see some stuff there but performance was a lot better here so it's essentially picking your poison. Do you want slightly better performance or do you want slightly better visuals? So, yeah. Next up is God of War, and this is the game that actually performed the worst today, which is pretty surprising because Cyberpunk was in the list. But, however, we set it to the low preset here and it got 46 FPS on average, which was pretty good, nothing to show about. But this is where the performance gets bad, and that's within the 1% low. It stuttered a lot it was borderline unplayable and you got 22 fps for that one percent low this was incredibly poor performance i'm not sure what was causing this i don't think it was vram limited but maybe if i get my hands on an rx 570 8 gig we could test this game again see what the one percent low performance is going to be like with all that said i don't recommend getting an rx 570 just to play god of war because you're not going to be having fun on this graphics card Last game up today is Rainbow Six Siege and it's going to be the complete opposite of God of War. This is because Siege is just that esports game and it's really easy to run. So here we set it to the medium preset which is what it defaulted to and this got 202 FPS on average with a 1% low of 143. Performance here incredibly good. If you've got a 240Hz monitor I'd recommend dropping this down to low. You should be easily getting over 240 FPS in this game. However, if you've got a FreeSync Premium monitor, 202 FPS, it's nothing to scoff at really, great performance here. The performance does drop ever so slightly when explosions are going off and when there's a lot of stuff going on on screen, but that's to be expected. But yeah, not bad performance here at all. I think the RX 570 is really starting to show its age now. Performance in newer games like God of War was just absolutely not great at all. I'm still surprised that Cyberpunk performed the way it did though. On the low preset, getting around 40-ish FPS is not bad at all. God of War on the other hand, performance was absolutely terrible. The average wasn't the worst in the world. However, the 1% low stutters were just absolutely awful. The game felt like a slideshow at times. And I'm not sure what this was down to because we wasn't using the full amount of VRAM available on the card. So maybe if I had an RX 570 8GB version I could test whether it was a VRAM or not. But I don't think this is a VRAM problem personally. As always, esports gaming performance was brilliant. Rainbow Six Siege, games like that performed 
totally fine. You'll be having fun playing these at 144Hz on 1080p, maybe even 240Hz if you're willing to drop them settings even further. Being slightly more powerful than the GTX 1650, which is now the world's most popular GPU, the RX 570 should bear some relevance for quite some years to come. This is because most developers try to keep in mind that the world's most popular GPU is obviously what a lot of people are gaming on so they want the most amount of people playing their game possible. Bearing this in mind if you're willing to play older games and esports titles the RX 570 is perfectly fine especially with its DirectX 12 full support as well so you won't be having any problems there. However if you're looking to play newer AAA games like God of War for instance I can't recommend the RX 570 in 2023. Performance was just too bad you're probably just better off buying a ps4 to play god of war on if i'm honest or you're better off saving for a better graphics card maybe something like a 6600 from amd because that graphics card at the moment its value pretty good but if you're looking to play old games or esports games the rx 570 for around 70 quid not a bad purchase at all with all this being said, I'm going to leave the video here, so if you like this video, like it, stay subscribed for more content because I do have a lot more benchmarks on the way and don't forget that PC hustle because this RX 570 is going into a PC so we will test that PC separately as well. And don't forget to subscribe if you like the content and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.